Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Not So Common Podcast. I'm Pat Contry. I'm here with someone who's typically not here for the Not So Common Podcast, Ian Ferguson. He's my CU podcast partner in crime, longtime friend. And usually on, on these off weeks of the CU podcast, I talk to a YouTuber or a journalist or just ramble about things or talk about things with, with Frank. But I want to have Ian here because I didn't want to wait, and he didn't want to wait until the next CU podcast to address something that came to light after the last recording uh, a week ago on Tuesday, the 10th. And that was uh, a revelation, a response from Channel Awesome. And in that response to all the accusations about them mistreating former employees, uh, it came to light that uh, my deceased friend, uh, Ian knew him for a short time, maybe referred to him as his friend, maybe not. Uh, Justin Carmichael, a.k.a. Juario, was outed, allegedly, strong allegations as a sexual predator. And strange news to hear at the time. Uh, before I get into that, uh, my father had a saying, which I think is perfect for this situation. Two meanings. Uh, he said, the only perfect people are dead. Just two meanings. Meaning that no one alive is perfect, potentially. And that, I guess potentially also though, dead people get glorified. Um, you tend to overlook their shortcomings, their mistakes, uh, their picadillos or whatever else. Um, and with Justin... It was always a situation with me where I knew the guy. I spoke to him on the phone. I spoke to him on the phone less than a week before he committed suicide in January 2014. And it was always the situation where he he kept me at like arm's length when it came to certain parts of his life, which I understood. You know, uh, I, I knew that his marriage probably wasn't on the best footing just from seeing his behavior. You know, at conventions, talking to other women, fans potentially. We'll get into that. And I knew, I knew for a fact that financially he was in trouble. I mean, he he talked to me about needing a reference for a couple jobs, getting interviews to work at. I think like a hobby shop, for example. So I knew things weren't great for him. I I couldn't imagine anything else at the time because you never want to just jump to conclusions about people you consider a friend. You always want to not think they're could, could potentially be monsters. Up to that point, you know what I mean? It's like, well, you know, I befriended someone that potentially could be a total sleazeball. You don't ever really get there quickly. You know, looking back, um, and by the way, I spoke to someone that pr- would, at the time could verify the allegation of a sexual assault allegedly committed by Justin. I'm not going to speak to uh, the potential grooming of underage girls. That I don't, there might be something that comes out of that. I have no idea. Sure. If that's part of this or that's connected, who knows if more uh, potential victims come out, I guess we'll have to see. But we can just speak to what I know at the time and and what I've seen uh, in trying to put two and two uh, together. Um, It wasn't it wasn't a secret uh, looking at Justin's behavior, at least at conventions, that he interacted with fans. Sure. A lot of them were young women. He had he had a predominantly younger female fan base to begin with. Right. He he was a we we talked about it before a patriarchal figure, not just for the uh, the men I guess to some extent, but the females, and that's just the way he was. He was older he, when he passed away. I think he was forty two or forty three, and a lot of these people, fans in general, Channel Awesome are usually at most in their early to mid twenty. I mean, at most, a lot of them were, you know, that seventeen to twenty two ish sort of like late high school, early college range. So I didn't think that was too particularly strange given the overall younger fanship. It, it made sense. Um, and then the fact that how he preached, he was a Mr. Rogers type character that he portrayed. So to me, it was like, okay, that makes sense that people would gravitate towards that. But at conventions, though, uh, there were things I saw that w- left me uncomfortable. Nothing I saw that was illegal, by the way, but just things that I thought were a little over the line. You know, um, I, I saw him give fans like shoulder and back rubs like they they were willing participants but the fact that he was doing that like in hallways outside of panels at magfest i thought was just kind of inappropriate to do that you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you can get a reputation for being like that for example and i'll get into the other story later afterwards so i i, I held the last the lasting image i have of justin the last time i saw him which was Magfest 2014. And that was a Magfest, by the way, that I didn't get to see Justin, for better or for worse. I was running around setting up um, interviews for video game years, getting interviews with Eagle Raptor and Pro Jared and Mike and, and James 
and um, and 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 I think Breno Floss and just running around and doing all these things at the time um, that I didn't get a chance to interact with anyone. I was just busy. So the, the, the one of the only few times I got to see Justin was at the end, like going up the escalator, literally going up the end with like my DVD box and he had his arm around a female fan walking like down the hall. And that was the last image I ever had with him. So I never talked to Justin about his personal life. I felt like either it was apparent that his marriage was either they had an open marriage or it was broken enough that he felt comfortable doing that, that there was an understanding. You know I mean, like you're not going to get away with that, doing that stuff in the open without people asking questions. Sure. You know, so I always figured that that was what it is, what it was. You know, he, he had this, this patriarchal nice guy image, but hey, he did talk to these fans and maybe he dabbled every now and then. And that's where I thought that's where it stood. You know, it's like, and, and maybe that's where it stood for most of his behavior, as far as I know, you know, like I said, I never saw him do anything illegal, you know, or, or heard anything from anyone that he was doing something wrong at the time. So when these revelations come out, I'm not totally shocked based upon this other behavior that I've seen on the side. And, and one thing in particular I'll get into um, that happened in, in mid-2014, which was after he was gone from um, Channel Awesome since he was, excuse me, mid-2013. I was say he... Mid-2013 because he was gone from, after Manifest 2013, he was let go from Channel Awesome. We'll get into that. So... I have a lot of mixed feelings. I'm obviously extremely, obviously disappointed in, in Justin. Um, like I said, again, he did keep me at arm's length when it came to stuff, but I felt like he he confided in, in me with other things. But you know, he obviously had had a had, had some had a dark side. A lot of people do. Um, this is darker than other people's dark sides. If what we know to be alleged is true, and and from it's more likely than not from what I've heard and the person I spoke to. And there could be other cases that come out. Um, so, yeah. So, so what do you do in a situation like this? Uh, someone who was uh, deified after their death. But at the time, though, people knew that uh, this guy's probably done some bad things for a year before he passed away. People, you. And I'll get into how fucking annoyed I am at that. Uh, but what do you do at that point? You know what I mean? Like, how do you go back? So, so one of the better videos I've seen about this fallout was uh, uh, Kaylin, aka Mars Girl, um, who was really close friends with Justin for a long time, closer friend that friend than me. Um, she she finished his Fam and Common Rider like send off movie. She put in her own money and months and months of time, like a tribute to Justin, like good friends. What is she? Does she feel like a fool after this? I mean, should she feel like a fool? Should people that put up tribute videos about how Justin touched our lives feel like a fool because of revelations of stuff in his personal life that's coming out now? I, I will say this. If if Justin spoke to you in some way from his videos he produced, for example, his You're Not Stupid video that tons of people have talked about and seen, like his uplifting message, don't feel bad if that message touched you in some way because the person behind it may have been a monster at some point in their personal life. The message was still the message. You shouldn't feel ashamed that you felt some way or it helped you because the message was the message. It's going to come from someone. It helped you out. You shouldn't feel terrible about that. You know, I, I'm not sure how you personally are going to square it all, the message from the messenger. Uh, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm done processing it. I'm obviously not happy for lots of reasons about it uh, because also because people knew about it and didn't say anything and allowed him to still be in the community without telling others that this sort of person was around. Um, that to me is borderline sickening, if not sickening of itself and cowardly. Um, to me, you can protect potential victims while still warning the community about someone who's out there. So I don't want to hear any bullshit about, well, the victims didn't want uh, to potentially be outed. Okay. Then so don't out the victims. Don't out the victims. But why don't you let, I don't know, conventions know that this person's out there. Let a website that still was hosting his videos. Yeah. Allow future, you know, tell future employers that, yeah. uh, you know, this may be I was, problematic. I was the liaison between Justin and Retroware. And we didn't have a sniff of this stuff. When we brought him on in the fall of 2012. No 2013. idea. 2013. No, it was fall 2012. Oh, okay. He came on. I thought he was let go in mid-2013 after. He was on RetroWare oh, okay. before. Okay. Um, that, five, yeah. So, 
And when, when, when he was let go from uh, Channel Awesome, a time, let me make sure I get my timeline right. But I'm pretty sure that's what happened because he was, he was on, I believe he was on, was he on one or two? But when he was let go from Channel Awesome, I asked him why we let go. And he gave me like this answer, like, you know, it just felt like it was time to move on. And, you know, it didn't feel like there was growth there and everything else. Like, it was like somewhat reasonable response. It wasn't like, I didn't feel like, how could, why should I dig deeper than that at the time? You know, it's like, well, okay, well, if he did something horrible, I guess we'd find out about it. Well, my, that's my naivety. You know, like if he did something else, if he got kicked off the site for something totally awful, I, you know, we would know about it. You know what I mean? Right. That, I mean, what he said sounds like perhaps a vague excuse of maybe they didn't like his stuff. And that was just the easy way of saying, eh, sure. Right. Like in my head, I'm like, yeah, you know, if I saw him giving a, a you know, a back shoulder up to, to a woman, maybe one fan complained about it or thought it was inappropriate for him to do that. So I'm like, okay, I can see that. It, that's like, that's not totally horrific it's still not good but i thought maybe that could be the worst case scenario where someone said that's over the line you shouldn't allow that behavior and i've been like okay that's reasonable you know it's not something uh, totally damning you shouldn't be able to come back from or be forgiven from you know like that's what i thought that could have been possibly the worst case scenario based upon what i personally saw at the uh at the time so i, I don't know what, what are your thoughts while i collect for my second round of, <laughs> of, of monologuing i guess um, so, I mean, my, my first concern is, you know, uh, with, with the people who have come forward, um, with, with the allegations, uh, you know, um, one, it, it, it could not have been easy at two, two, I, I, I understand why it's, it can't be easy, and uh, I, I hope the blowback uh, that they, they must be getting from this is, I, I hope they're sheltering themselves from it in, in an appropriate way. Um, there's, there's nothing, Justin's gone, so there's, there's nothing that can really be done, and, you know, with, if the allegations are true, which at, at, with what you've discussed... And with the little bit that uh, I've heard, and I guess with with some things that maybe now I can extrapolate, I I, I feel that we're 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 in the territory where this perhaps is is more likely than not. Oh, I'd say I'd I, say I, yeah. I I I really do think that this is this is true. Um, and that, again, I totally I totally understand not wanting any to come forward victim stories to come forward, forward after he's dead but there was this nice year at least in oh, between yes where they apparently knew about it at channel awesome knew about oh, it i'm getting to that oh yeah i'm getting to that so i i believe the allegations yes they're allegations i believe the allegations that's 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 the easiest way to sum that up um so there's there's unfortunately no real action they can take. And that must be incredibly frustrating for them. So my initial reaction to this is Jesus Christ. I I just I I have to wonder what they're going through and when you say we talk about the people that knew about this or the victims. The victims. Oh yeah, the victims. The see, victims. Victims see someone deified, and then no one says like, a, no one comes out saying, "Okay, they're, this guy they're was deified." Guy. There's nothing they can do about it, and there's there's no hope for real closure. Sure. In that, it 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 upsets me, but but not in that. But for them, I, I don't know how to accurately put that. It makes me extraordinarily angry and frustrated because they're never, they're never going to see. There's never justice to be done. There's never, there's no justice to be done. The, the deification of Justin bothered me to extent. Obviously, you want to honor someone, but the reason why I always felt uncomfortable, I felt uncomfortable when people. I mean, obviously, if you have emotions, you're you're gonna if you're gonna. Be careful about it. Cry. I'm, I'm not judging that. What I'm judging is knowing your confidence in knowing who that person was. That's I, that's the one thing where because here's the thing, I can say with confidence that I knew 
Justin better than 98% of the people that did the tribute videos that spoke about him tearfully, and I still didn't know him. Yeah. I didn't know him at the time. Um, I didn't know him at his death. I didn't feel comfortable um, speaking at his tribute at Com Bravo uh, 2014. I was not comfortable because I was like, I don't feel qualified to talk about this man's life because while I knew him professionally, while I considered him a friend on some level, I didn't know about his personal life as much as I did, obviously. And I didn't know what type of person he was going back. I knew him from the persona of the videos as a producer first. When you, when you speak with uh, video producers online, when you get to know whoever it is, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's a James Rolfe, whether it's a, a Norm Caruso, whether it's a, whether it's a um, whoever, you know them originally from their video work right. as producers. You have to unravel that rapper to find out the person underneath to see if you like that person. I never got to that comfortable point with Justin, unfortunately. For better or for worse, maybe if I did, maybe I could have stemmed some of this. I don't fucking know. I could have been there for him in a different way. He didn't feel comfortable enough telling me about this other shit or his depression. I knew I knew something was wrong. I didn't know it was that bad. So the point is this, though, is that when you're deifying someone to the extent that what happened with Justin, this this is this can happen. I, it's not always going to happen, but this can happen because no one truly knew him personally. No one, except for some of the higher ups and some of I guess some of the content producers kind of knew at Channel Awesome. I'm not going to speculate who besides the higher ups, but they knew they knew enough that they had to let him go. I think that's what en enrages me most is that there were people who knew who did nothing, and and why there are. Some who say it was the victim's wishes. And as you said before, you can let people know without without exposing the victims. And the reason why you do that is you have to look at the larger picture. What if he does that again and again and again? You have to think about the ability of this person to continue doing this it's rarely an isolated incident they they scare when this sort of behavior is a pattern it they it, it's not uncommon for them to scare past victims so they can continue doing committing sure. this crime sure and then by him sticking around, you, a, a possible victim can feel like they can be gaslit if they come out with saying their story or feel like no one's going to believe me, Right. which I think one of the potential victims uh, or alleged victims said that. It's like, I feel like, oh, this guy's treated like a pillar of the community, a beacon. What if I say something? I'm going to be automatically deemed a liar. So the fact that um, you're going to... Those higher-ups have to fucking live with this shit now because you think uh, uh, Retro would have kept them on? No. If they knew about this, John and Lance, fuck John and Lance are fucking family men with kids. You think they would have uh, had him on the site? He would have been gone the next fucking hour. Oh yeah, he would not have been uh, allowed at any panels. He would not, and then word would have spread that this is persona non grata. He would have been ostracized. Yeah, he, he would have been ostracized. He wouldn't have had another minute as as a content provider. But instead, you had a nice fucking year uh, where he went to. Uh, he went to Con Bravo that year. Um, he went to the next following MAGFest uh, as a guest, uh, a part of RetroWare. was on the panel. Um, he probably went to three or four other conventions I can't think of in that year. So there are potential victims out there because people didn't warn the community. And that, and that to me, is, is disappointing. It is. It's disappointing. And I, I should probably um, address my brief relationship with Justin because I, I was... Uh, it shocked me and I was I was broken up when uh, he he he, he uh, killed himself um, I was just getting into I was, I was just becoming part of I, I guess the the community um, that was like your what your your second magfest was my I've only done one magfest that was, was your my, only one yeah it okay. was my first magfest 2014 and 2014 um, the podcast had been going for about six months it had just picked it just started picking up in the past two or three months and um 
I mean, it's it's it was, funny. It was introduction to the scene. It was so, my so, yeah. It was yeah. my introduction to the scene. It was my first time meeting any people there. Uh, and I, you know, it's it's funny because I'm still kind of uncomfortable. You know, I, there are still things that make me uncomfortable about going out into like that that big world now. And I've done a bunch of conventions at this point. Um, but back then, I I really felt like a fish out of water. And and Justin had. Uh, you know, about two, three months prior that October and November had, you know, um, he had started popping up in the comments section and, and he had contacted me through Twitter and, you know, he had made it known that he was, um, you know, a fan of the podcast and he had enjoyed my takes on things. So that was the first big member of the YouTube community who had, you know, complimented, um, you know, what we were doing. Uh, you know, and had specifically said something to me, I think. And, um, you know, to me, that was a nice compliment at that time. And he came off as he did to, you know, most people as, you know, warm and genuine. And, uh, you know, he, he would encourage me here and there, especially in those first months, um, when I would get a little, you know, nervous or unsure of myself there. And I met him at, um, you know, uh, MAGFest and, uh, you know, I was just looking into, you know, starting to make pins and stuff, which I do a lot of now. And, you know, he was making pins and he, he told me a little bit about, you know, how to get into it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it's weird to say it now, but I generally thought of him as a safe person, which apparently now is, you know, that's his, that was his MO. So I, I, he I just feel weird about it because those seem to kind of be now looking at the the news that's come out that just seems to be like that's how he worked so you you would hope that 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 was weaknesses of weaknesses of of him and not his not his what he planned to do through the character you would hope that he wasn't that total monster where i i constructed this persona just so i can talk to these young girls right you would but, fucking hope but, that and that's obviously the, thing, the results I, the same but you would hope i'm not trying to say that you know he was he was doing it to guys and girls both but i'm just saying like was that how he worked with women to get what he wanted from them but that's also how he worked with guys uh, to try to keep people on his side was that I'll say this was that how he tried to but by the way he came to retro where it was earlier than i thought it was april 26 2012. so anyways what i'm getting at is so but that's why but you know he he whatever the reason was is i felt very trusting of him very quickly and when he passed yeah. i felt like i had lost someone who had um who was safe protecting that sort of thing you thought you thought he was like a fatherly figure someone you right felt exactly on. so i'll say this. that's why i reacted the way i did and uh, now looking back on it i you know it's like uh you know is the, you know and by the way I'm, how much of this was you was, know truly false you know how much of this was really just a work on his part sure it, it really screws it, it, by the way it's I, fucked up I, i'm keeping that video up because it was a moment in time i don't think it should be taken down that's how we felt our no you true. i mean you asked me immediately afterwards and i said no i said that that looks bad i said you leave it and up because and people are taking down the tribute videos they're re-editing his cameos out of videos and stuff and it's like you can't erase it from history you can't i will say this i forgot to bring this up when uh in terms of being around me and working he was a fucking professional like when when he came when we did the retroware the last time retroware went to E3 in 2013 uh he was a fucking pro. Like he was he did everything. He was on camera with me and did great. I had no reason, you know, like professionally he was fantastic. I saw nothing there that was like oh something's off or he's using this for other means at least for that at least for that fucking 4 day weekend sure. or 4 days. And when I say stuff like yeah. this it's not to defend him. It's no, it's, it's not. to it's to try to clarify how this shit happens sure yeah um so again um you watch that watch that marco video because she even said like you know i worked on this this fucking feature length film in his memory and should i take it down it's like no it's a it's a work at the time it meant something there was people that acted in it that they went you know that they, they put a lot of work into it stunt people you know special effects people it should exist but she said i'm taking i'm disabling the comments and putting up a little disclaimer 
about <laughs> we had no idea this is how the guy was. I would again, people that knew about him are gonna have to fucking live with it. They're gonna have to live the fact that they could have told people in the community. Uh, there's other potential victims out there because they didn't tell the community. Yeah, they're gonna have to fucking live with that. That's that to me is the, the most harrowing part of all this disclosure of the channel awesome stuff coming out is that is that this is the final nail in the proverbial coffin because this is that is heinous absolutely heinous not to let other people know about a potential danger fucking heinous and cowardly and you can you can try to structure it however you want to no there's no way but it's 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 heinous and um yeah and 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 he he's not here to answer for any potential crimes or actions at this point you know four over four years later so it is what it is it's a it's a shocking blow to many people that thought they knew him it's a blow to the community you know and and hopefully hopefully the uh, potential victims out there um even if they can't find any solace maybe they can feel more comfortable coming forward now at least telling their story to get it off their chest you know, maybe maybe there's that right small fucking silver line if there's any silver lining at all of this which i'm struggling to find maybe it's that or the fact that if this ever happens again people will not be so fucking hesitant to let people know about a potential danger to, you know for the community well if there's a time and a climate for it i think now is it sure there you have it. i'm not sure what else we can go from this you know? I, I don't think there's i it, to talk about anything else after this seems like it would be wrong. So how about that? Uh, how about that, Sean Hannity? Huh? Looks like a fucking thumb. <laughs> According to Frank, that'd be uh, Peyton Manning. Looks like a thumb. His head's a thumb. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, not sure how to how to close this properly, but uh, I guess thanks for listening to this uh, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, off week for the not so common podcast thanks for ian for taking time out here and um yeah so we'll just want to talk about this in the cu podcast we can just get on with the wacky tales of shenmue being remastered or whatever else you know yep like that matters hmm. all right you done yep okay Ian's not he's getting we're done out. he's done we're done all right Take it easy, everyone. Remember, don't feel don't feel bad if you held some up in a certain light and you had no idea how they really were. It's not it's not your fault. Just yeah, just roll with it the best you can. And you know, watch watch that deification in the future. Sure. Take care. <laughs>